Um, now the second, our second speaker is Abdurrahman Al Nayadi, and I welcome him. He is the director of policy planning of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the UAE, and he will be speaking on the link between economic prosperity and security in the region, how increased economic cooperation can benefit the Middle East, given the leadership role of the UAE. We are all, of course, interested to listen to you, Abdurrahman. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, and thank you for the opportunity to be in this uh, very important uh, uh, workshop. Um, it's difficult to really discuss the region without uh, shedding light on what's happening in Gaza. And uh, I would try through my remarks, and I'm not going to take 15 minutes, but less, uh, to basically um, try and uh, put the wide lens on what's happening in our region and where we can be constructive. Um, the region has been uh, through crises, uh, uh, moving from a crisis to another uh, for a long time. And uh, yet another big crisis with this magnitude happening divert our attention from every aspiration that we seek for our region and focus on trying to reach this humanitarian ceasefire and uh, the unhindered access of humanitarian aid. And then looking into the day after, as, as uh, Dr. Muna has mentioned, the, the day after in which um, we know that the status quo prior to what happened is not uh, sustainable as well. Um, so I would try to uh, put, put some diagnosis and speak about why we think prosperity is, about of, uh, is part of the regional security where we speak. Um, That's, first of all, the, the way we look at it uh, in the UAE, that uh, any regional security architect requires a strong component of economic prosperity. And why do we say that? I believe maybe you heard it in the last session uh, by Dr. Anwar Gargash mentioning uh, the same idea. And why do we say that? We say that because... Um, we live in a region uh, with uh, one of the youngest demographies. Uh, over 55% of our region right now is uh, less than 30 years old. Unemployment, 30% uh, of the unemployment rates in the region is uh, of people who have university degrees. Poverty is hitting one of of every four childs in the MENA region. And that's basically the, the statistics uh, that are online. This takes us to the importance of addressing these socioeconomic uh, factors if we want to reach a sustainable uh, peace and stability in the region. The, 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 so, the socioeconomic factors that led to uh, what so-called the Arab Spring since the 2011 uh, are not uh, addressed yet. Uh, the socioeconomic factors uh, in the region through the multiple crises and the ramification of all the crises of the region has multiplied by COVID, by Ukraine, and now by the Gaza war. And that leaves us with uh, uh, the reality that any pursue toward peace and stability requires to address the socioeconomic factors through trying to achieve economic uh, prosperity. So what do we need to do that? From our perspective, there are three main elements to pursue that. Number one is basically that regional countries need to move from the geopolitics of things into the geoeconomics of things and in engage uh, with um, a mindset of creating the economic denominators that we need um, in, in our region. Um, that requires, obviously, uh, uh, in many parts, the move from what we try to do prior to what we see right now in Gaza, from de-escalation in the region uh, to cooperation in the region. And that move from de-escalation to cooperation requires a fundamental confidence building measures that many uh, regional security initiatives neglected in the past. Uh, these confidence building measures 
um, are very important in that exact uh, goal of moving from a fragile de-escalation to reach uh, a, a sustainable uh, cooperation uh, in the region. Number two, it's very necessary to address uh, extremism in all its manifestation. And why do we say that? Because we understand that extremism is something to be addressed. We understand that extremism uh, are con is conducive to terrorism. We understand extremism is violent, but the extremism is also a disruptive, uh, has a disruptive impact on social development. So even if it's not that extremism that passes the threshold of violent, it still has an impact that jeopardizes uh, social development and it's important to be addressed. But how do we address it? Countering the extremist messages is not enough. Well, the way we should address it is in a longer term vision of enhancing ed education, educational systems, encouraging uh, and building resilience in society by, by educating our uh, youth in critical thinking and uh, also uh, working on women and youth empowerment. Um, and this is very important. Uh, we in the UAE, uh, if I'm going to speak of one of our uh, most important achievements in the last 50 years, uh, women empowerment will be right there as a very clear achievement for our country. And why women empowerment? Because an empowered woman in a society creates a healthy society and prevent extremism. And this is the way we look at it as a prevent, one of the most effective preventive measure against extremism. Number three uh, is uh, to provide an alternative narrative. There should be not, not only countering uh, extremist, extremist messages, but also providing an alternative. And the alternative requires the opportunities for our youth that we spoke about, which we, requires also the prosperity overall. These alternatives are the coexistence, the tolerance, the uh, freedom of religious practices, and building bridges and people-to-people -people engagement. All these alternatives are very important to, be, to, to achieve the, the alternative uh, narrative in the region. Um, and, and number three within that, uh, what we should do, uh, all what I said is something that could happen, but that also requires strong institutions. The region requires strong institutions in, on the level, on the national level, on, on the, and also on the regional level. And that strong institutions uh, should be uh, the way forward to enhance the quality of life for our people because that's a, the sustainable way of doing it. Um, I think I'll, I'll stop here. I'll, I can take any question later on. Um, I try to be brief to diagnose and see the UAE perspective on how we see the region. Again, it's very difficult at this time to speak about uh, a future uh, optimistic uh, vision, but uh, I try to sum up uh, the wider lens on, on the region at this place. Thank you. Abdurrahman, thank you very much. Always going back to the basics, to the basic issues. We do provide a lot of sense, the education, so prepare the youth to the labor market. This is extremely important. Uh, empower people, empower women, that is a preventive measure for, um, you know, to counter the extremists, provide alternatives. So it's not enough, you know, to say I have, um, I'm against this opinion, but then what is the alternative? Uh, tolerance, strong institutions, not only at national level, but regional level. There are a lot of questions. Please write down your questions, and then you will have the opportunity to ask all those questions. Our